What up, what up, everybody? Today is Friday, April 26th, and that means I'm going to talk to you about some video game news. Lots of stuff happened this week, including two big games I'm going to talk about launching. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So at the beginning of the week on Tuesday, uh, MK11 has launched. Uh, I am currently playing through it and enjoying the crap out of it. Um, the only really commentary that I have is I've been playing through the storyline. That was the first thing I I did because I'm a narrative driven gamer and and I care about the stories in video games. Um, and so what I did is I I don't know if people have been watching for long enough, but I typically crank the crank the difficulty all the way up, and I'm usually in like the first few hours able to like hamstring you know or, or jerry rig my way through uh, the video game. But in this game, I could not. Uh, I, there's five difficulties in the game. Uh, very easy, easy, medium, hard, and very hard. And I cranked it up to very hard, and it is very hard. I got my ass handed to me for 45 minutes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I couldn't even get through the first fight, which was hilarious. I needed to learn all the button presses. I did play through the tutorial to give me a little bit of uh, help on that end so I know which buttons to press, because I'm not a big fighting game uh, person. If you have stopped by or if this is your first time, I don't play fighting games very often. Um, but I decided to play this one. Um, I then cranked it down to just hard, not very hard, but hard. And I was able to jerry-rig my way through the first fight, and then I got to the second fight, and I got my gas handed to me again for another 45 minutes. Um, so all I'm going to say about that is, uh, and then, uh, I finally dropped it down to medium, uh, a couple days ago, and I was able to, like, at least make progress. Uh, maybe a little bit too easy now, though. Um, so, what I'm saying is, you know, maybe difficulty scaling should be, I, I would assume that difficulty in a fighting game is hard to judge, like, if it's, like, number of actions per second, is that, if that's your limiter, then, like... I don't know how to, uh, yeah, I'm not a programmer. Um, I don't know how difficulty is judged in this case, but uh, medium, I think, is a little bit too easy, and hard is hella hard. Um, yeah, but the game made it easy for me to crank it in between fights or something like that, so uh, maybe I'll just give me a reason to play a second playthrough, depending on how short the story is. Um but overall, I'm enjoying my experience with MK11, um, and I will be playing more. Uh, really enjoying that I played MKX a lot, and so I recognize a lot of the characters. Everybody's kind of in the same story state that they were the last time I saw them. Um, and super interested to see what comes out of that. Uh, game's got an 83 Metacritic, which is good enough that if you're a fighting game fan, then you probably enjoy the game. Um, but not necessarily a 90 rated must buy. Everybody who plays video games should buy this game. Um, I kind of have like a weird scale that way. Um, but if you're a fighting game fan, I think MK11 will give you what you want. Next, coming out today, was Days Gone, brought to you by Ben Studios at Sony. Um, it launched with a 72 Metacritic, and that gave me some pause. I uh, read a couple reviews said that the game was kind of glitchy, that the 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 main uh, protagonist, he's got some flaws that don't really get that don't really get ad addressed in the game. Um, and the 72, so that's that's where I'm not much of a snob, but I do look at Metacritic scores before I make my purchasing decisions. Um, and 72 gives me pause. Um, so I went and delved deeper and Maybe eventually I'll grab a hold of it because I am looking for a zombie survival narrative driven shooter game. Um, but hopefully something fixes it to make it a little bit more enjoyable. I might check in on it. Um, but, you know, life's too short. I want to play good games. And 72 is probably right at that cusp where I start asking questions about why is it bad. Um, the reason, I don't know, if you've watched this before, I've been pretty much on the fence about this. I've been thinking it's going to be good, I've been thinking it's going to be bad. Um, whether or not I'd buy it or not has been uh, something I've been debating to myself for the past month or two. Um, I want The Last of Us, and so I thought this would be a game that would kind of scratch that itch. Um, but at 72, I'm probably not going to work my way through this game until later, until it's cheaper. Um, 
that's you that's some of it'll go one day i'll have a perfect formula that says metacritic score plus certain keywords plus something else equals value of game or something like that but i don't have that yet but 72 gave me pause i'm not willing to spend 60 dollars on a 72 rated game unfortunately even if it does contain zombies and sam witwer who i enjoy his acting um but yeah if you end up picking it up tell me how you what you think about it um but i am going to hold off and maybe play it at a later point um moving on those were the big games that kind of launched this week um so epic kind of threw the the ceo of epic kind of threw the gauntlet this week at steam and said i read an article saying something along the lines of epic will epic and its store will stop um will stop pursuing store exclusives if so if uh if steam has a more competitive rate like the amount of money that the publishers get back uh when they sell a game on their con on their platform um i it, it sounds like the gloves are off like Epic has just tossed the gauntlet in the middle of the room and said, hey, we'll stop, you know, uh, crapping all over your community and get and pulling away people from your mindshare if you just give everybody a better, um, if you give all the publishers a better rate, the developers a better rate. Um, I think it's super interesting. I don't fully trust, like, the motivation, but if they're doing something to make the, make the industry better, um, then all the more power to them. Um, I think... I don't know that it's been unfair or something like that, but um, I do know that I would assume a indie dev lives and breathes on their margin, and um, if they can get 90% of the revenue back rather than 70%, then that makes it, that's a big deal. That determines whether or not people get jobs. Um, I've talked about Epic a little bit before and how the store creating competition, and this is the ultimate form of competition is is hey um actually it's really like cutting through the bs um hey if you if if there's like an industry standard um that works and is better for everybody then more power to them to to kind of like force people's hands um i think it's super cool um but i do have like a hesitation i don't know if this comes from like some master i, I don't see all of the work workings yet of like does epic have some master plan to like just take steam out of the market by doing something like this uh i don't think they will but um but if they can move steam you know further towards giving devs more money back on their sales then more power to them maybe this will inspire steam to actually make games again rather than just being a platform to sell games on um but cool cool uh moving on there was an article about the ps5 is more than it it was like the the phrasing was so perfect the ps5 is more than a year away and it's like great uh i assumed it was more than than 12 months away from now it, it could have it might have well have said like the playstation 5 is exactly 16 months away or something like that like the the verbiage in the article was so like precise that you could hear that there was if you read between the lines you could see that they were saying something like hey it's gonna be here Q3, Q4 next next year, um, or even at E3. Um, like E3 2020, PlayStation 5's out. Go buy it now. Um, I don't know. I could see something like that, but I I was picturing more of a uh, Q3, Q4. I think the PlayStation for Pro launched in November of what was that? 17. Um, so uh, yeah. So I, I just thought it was the I just thought the word the verbiage was very pinpoint accurate and and cultivated so so it just felt like they were saying almost exactly when it was coming out, which is to say that it's more than twelve months away but less than twenty four months away. So expect to see PlayStation Five sometime Q three Q four in twenty twenty uh, when we fig when we hear about it uh, when we when they finally announce when it's coming. That'll be a day to be rejoiced, but uh, for now, it's more than 12 months away. You can take that to the bank. Um, cool, cool. Nintendo has made big strides. Uh, they uh, announced in their uh, like earnings call that their digital 
Um, digital sales on the... Uh, oh, sorry. Digital revenue on for Nintendo reached a billion dollars over the course of the fiscal year. Um, so April 1st, 2018 to March 31st, 2019, they made a billion dollars on digital. Um, I think that's crazy. Uh, oh, no, sorry. I don't think that's crazy because everyone has a digital platform that sells video games on and makes a bajillion dollars. Um, considering that's most of the market nowadays, uh, considering Xbox it's, has gone fully discless on some of its um, consoles. Um, yeah, I just think like they're like woohooing that, that they've you know made a billion dollars in a single year selling digital games to gamers. Um, and I think, huh, if only you'd done this sooner. That would have been smart, right? Think of all the billions of dollars you haven't made. Um, I just, I think the kind of like, hoorah, hoorah, like, uh, was just, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, anyway uh, before I get tongue-tied talking about how Nintendo um, should have been making more money all along and should probably discount more often than they do in their store, um, let's move on to, they also have... Uh, announced that they have 10 million or just under 9.8 million subscribers to PlayStation or no, no, to Nintendo Switch Online. Um, when you sell it for 20 bucks a year, uh, and it's the only way that you can get online cloud saves and um, access to playing multiplayer, yeah, you're gonna make you're gonna get a lot of subscribers. A lot of people own a Switch. It's constantly selling more than any other console on the market. Um, so. No surprise there, but uh, glad to hear that people like me are are uh, uh, Switch owners are buying into uh, Nintendo Switch Online. I swear I'm going to call it Nintendo Switch Plus at some point, or Switch Plus, because everything's Plus. Soon Xbox Live is going to be Xbox Plus. You have Disney Plus. You have Apple Plus. Everything is Plus. So just 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 call it Switch Plus. And I'll I'll buy it for twenty dollars a year. <laughs> um, moving on, uh, now that I am not going to be playing Days Gone, and I don't know how long Mortal Kombat will hold my attention, uh, there has been a smaller game that I do want to shine the light on called Plague Tale In uh, Innocence. Um, all I know about it is there's a bunch of rats in this like medieval um, this medieval town, and there's just rat swarms. I think it's set during the bubonic plague or something like that. Um, I thought it looked like a very like telltale narrative type game. Um, and now it's looking more like a stealth based, like uh, puzzle, puzzly game, um, you know, third person. Uh, but it might be a game that I pick up uh, sometime soon. I'm definitely going to pick up uh, Cuphead on the Switch, you know, sometime soon because I can't wait to play more of that. Um, but yeah, Plague Tale Innocence, it comes out. May 14th, correct me if I'm wrong down below, um, but tell me what you think of that game, tell me what games you're playing, talk to me about video games, that's all I want. Um, moving on, Vampire Bloodlines put out, Vampire Bloodlines 2 put out a uh, trailer talking about their clan, and I think clans in this game mean like character classes, uh, if I remember correctly from Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Um, yeah, so the most recent clan is more of a mage, kind of like, uh, has like telekinetic powers and like can summon uh, swarms of bats or rats or something like that. Um, but they put out a pretty cool trailer, got me hyped for the game. I can't wait to say, see what other type of creatures you can play. They were called Thin Bloods, which make, they, I remember in Bloodlines, they had like a scale of like, of like how much blood you drink turns you either, either more more bestial or more um more bestial or more like the floofy twilight twilighty vampires um yeah so there's like this scale of like how much blood you drink changes uh you know how the world views you and how you interact with it if you're a brutish bestial type or if you're like a sophisticated political uh i drink less blood i'm still more human i think it was a humanity scale and it was like yeah anyway uh, I like the name Thin Bloods. Um, I like that they have magical powers um, and looking forward to being a vampire in their world sometime soon. Uh, moving on, Humble Bundle is giving away Gone Home in their Humble Trove. Um, I already have Gone Home in from PlayStation Plus. 
Uh, speaking of PlayStation Plus, <laughs> I already have Gone Home in PlayStation Plus, and I I cannot recommend it enough. It's a nice bite-sized 90 minutes to two and a half hour game. Um, it's a really cool experience. I was actually just talking about it a week ago with my friends about it has some eerie elements, but it's not quite a horror game, uh, but it's just unsettling enough that it gives you that kind of like chills at certain points. Definitely worth playing. Uh, you can spare the 90 to 90 to 150 minutes of, of gameplay because the game's awesome and uh, it deserves a play. And then last but certainly not least, get your BlizzCon tickets. Um, I've never been to BlizzCon, but I'm in the area, so I might as well go this year and, and maybe I will. Um, but looking forward to BlizzCon tickets. If you're going to BlizzCon, uh, I don't know. Tell me in the comments and maybe we can talk about video games there as well. <laughs> uh, huge Blizzard fan, but just never gone before. Um, and I don't know. Maybe I will this year. Trying to think of more things that I can, more conventions that I can go to to get closer and closer to video games and news and all that kind of stuff. Um, well, cool, cool. This was the uh, video game news for April 26th. Hope you enjoy it. If you're watching this on my YouTube, I, you're probably watching this on Saturday. A like and a subscribe goes a long way. Um, or a thumbs up and a subscribe goes a long way so you can see more content like this every week. Uh, and if you're watching this live uh, Friday night on my Twitch, a, uh, a follow goes pretty far and a subscribe goes the furthest. Uh, I have emotes working on setting up my own Discord so that we can talk about video game news in Discord in one place. Um, but cool. Let me know if you enjoyed. If you think I forgot anything from this week, tell me about it in the comments below. Uh, hope you enjoy. Hope you have a super weekend. Hope you have a super Friday. Hope you are super. Thanks. Bye.